Greetings brothers, welcome to this week's tactics videos. Today we're going to talk about the chief librarian myth this time. We're going to talk about his damage, we're going to talk about his survivability, we're going to talk about how you play him, his costs, his new rules, everything. So by the end of the video you'll know exactly what you need to do to get the most out of Mephiston on the tabletop. Let's dive into this week's tactics video. So thanks for being here and if we are just meeting, my name is John, the Blood Angels Commander. Every week I'm going to tell you how to get the best out of your Blood Angels on the tabletop and become a better 40k commander. So Mephiston, the Lord of Death, dark, brooding and enormously powerful. Mephiston is a Blood Angels chief librarian, a figure of awe in the chapter. Many sons of Sanguinius perceive him as a saviour, not only because of his power, but because of what he has overcome. Mephiston is the only known Blood Angel to have wholly cast out the Black Rage. So, so let's dive into everything Mephiston. So Mephiston now has the lone operative rule and he is tanky as hell. So does that make him good? By the way, this is the t-shirt design that you can get if you buy a Blood Angels Commander t-shirt. So click below if you want to get a t-shirt with this awesome Mephiston on it. I commissioned him from one of the local artists that I know. Uh, so he was 100 points. His weapons are pretty much identical to where they were in the index. However, he has been granted lethal hits on Vitarius. He retains Fight First, which arguably could be a little bit weaker, right? Because he no longer leads a unit. He has a does Feel No Pain improved to 4 up. He gains permanent advance and charge, which is certainly decent with his 7 inch base movement. So the second you put him in a transport, he's moving 10 inches, then he's advancing, then he's charging. He also potentially has the ability to lock enemies in combat. They need to pass a successful leadership test in order to fall back from him. Uh, he's the only Blood Angels character with Toughness 5. Um, and now he's on his own, it's much more likely to actually be meaningful. Before he was used to be attached to typically a unit of Toughness 4 guys so that the enemy would roll to wound on T4. So this gives him a little bit more survivability as well. And then the main question is, just how useful and reliable is he going to be? So. Is, is his new points going to justify that? So let's dive into quite a lot of data. So this is his data sheet. He basically has two versions of his smite, uh, which is Fury of the Ancients. Uh, typically, I think I would fire this on Hazardous. I think it's worth it for the sustained hits three. And uh, he's sitting on twos, three attacks, strength five, minus two, D3 damage. I don't like D3 damage, and I've done a lot of maths on that in this video, so I'll tell you why I don't like it later. He also has a plasma pistol that you can overcharge. I guess the advantage on rolling his hazardous weapons now is he does have that 4-up feel-no-pain. So typically, if he did take three mortal wounds from hazardous, statistically, you should save one and a half of them. Uh, so typically, you might only take one or two mortal wounds if you unfortunately roll a hazardous roll, right? Uh, Vitarius got lethal hits. It is a psychic weapon, not that that comes up all that often. He will get 7 attacks on the charge in Liberator Assault Group, and he will be hitting at strength 11. He is good AP, like really good AP, AP 3, but again, he's got that damage 3, which is not ideal. Um, but his, I mean, his profile is nice. Toughness 5, 2 up save. He can just be Armor Contempted as well, uh, which might have some value if you're getting hit with AP 1 or 2. Armor of Contempt would actually have some great value here. He has the 6 wounds. He has the 4-up Feel No Pain, like we mentioned, Fight First, Lone Operative, Advance and Charge, and enemies must take a leadership test, or if they're in combat with him and they fail their leadership test, they must remain stationary. Now, this could be more useful for, for protecting another unit than protecting himself, I feel like. I would probably want to have Mephiston close to another combat unit, so the other combat unit and Mephiston both make the charge. If we don't kill the enemy, Mephiston potentially keeps them from falling back, meaning most of the time Blood Angels are using infantry models. You can't shoot infantry that are stuck in combat, so this could protect like a unit of Sangri Guard or Death Company or Blade Guard from being shot by another model or another unit if he can keep the unit they're in combat with forced to remain stationary. So there's some good value in this. So yeah, a lot of keywords on Mephiston, a lot of good rules. Worth mentioning he has grenades as well. He can fire the hazardous weapons with a little bit less worry because of the 4-up feel no pain. And most of his damage, however, is random and it is D3. And this is one of the reasons that I'm 50-50 on this model. It's also going to come down to his points. The codex points are 125. I think if he's much more than this, he will be difficult to play. If he's a few less than this, he might be very strong. Now, the goals for this video, right? How survivable is he actually? How reliable is his damage output? And how do we play him? 
to get the most value out of them. I think it's three pretty clear goals. Um, but if you want to know all about that, then it is now time to ask you please so much to like, subscribe, or click the bell and set your notifications to all. If you want to be notified about every time I go live, you'll need to turn your notifications to all. So please go ahead and do that. So how survivable is he actually? And I took a couple of interesting characters that sort of come in similar points or similar roles, right? So Mephisto at the moment is 125, the Sanguinor is 140, he is kind of the same in that he is a combat character that wants to get in and tussle and fight first. And then we've got Lieutenant and Combi Weapon, which is like our lone operative action monkey lieutenant that wants to basically go around doing lone operative things. In fact, the Sanguinor is a lone operative as well. So this is three lone operatives. How does he shape up against them? So if we've got against like a Mastercrafted Chainsword with a Strength 4 AP 1, 2 damage, he needs to get 54 wound rolls made against him. And the way that I work that out is basically say 54 wound rolls, we only wound on 5s, then he would save on 3s, then he'd have his 4 up, feel no pain. So against something with AP1, and this would be amazing actually if you used Armour of Contempt, but against these AP1 weapons, even AP2 1 damage bubotic uh, blades from like Death Guard, he is very, very survivable. He could probably tank like a whole squad of guys with Mastercrafted Chainsaws, not that you really ever come across that, but you could definitely tank like a lot of Blightlord Terminators, Against Power Claws from Orcs, you could possibly tank like a whole squad of knobs based on the fact that like knobs get like four attacks on the wah. Yeah, four attacks on the wah, but they only hit on fours, meaning they would do 20. So like 10 knobs would only just kill him with their strength 9 minus 2, 2 damage uh, Power Claws. And then against Chaos Knights, I mean, he's not ideal against Chaos Knights. His T5 means he is getting wounded on twos from the Chain Talons. AP3 puts him on that five up save. Not so good into something like a Chaos Knight. But against Orcs, that's pretty interesting. So if he ever came into like a five-man unit of Orcs, he'd do really well. If he ever came into a five-man unit of uh, Blade, uh, Death Guard, Terminators, he could do really well in terms of survival. And against AP1 Strength 4 Weaponry, he is very, very good. If you look at the number difference between Mephiston and the Sanguinar in terms of Strength 4 Weaponry, that extra point of toughness and then that 4 up feel no pain makes a massive, massive difference. And you can see the lone operative guy down here. He's kind of doing his lone operative things. Uh, it's a different role. Um, but you could almost take two of these guys at 70 points. So if you are needing like cheap loan operatives to do actions, maybe if Mephiston is quite pricey. But like, what does this tell me, right? It tells me he's going to be very effective against uh, fighting enemy MSU models or, or units. So basically units that are small. So like a unit of like um, assault marines, a unit of orc knobs, a, a small terminator unit potentially. All these minimum size units he's going to do very well um, just because his defensive profile is kind of nuts. Uh, he's also going to potentially hiding on the side objective, right, to make the use of his lone operative. He only takes up one seat in an impulsor and he can jump out 10 inches, so you can get, like, a pretty long charge. Like, if five knobs did attack him with the 20 power claws, they only make 10 hits, so arguably they would only take, like, half his health off, and that's before you factor in the fact that he gets fight first. So if five knobs charge him, he could kill a couple of knobs, and then potentially they may only do a couple of damage to him, which is which is good. Like so, he can potentially bully some minimum size units. So I don't think he's unkillable, and large hard hitting enemies will still dispatch him just as quick as they dispatch other toughness four four up characters. Like he is no more survivable uh, than the Sanguinar against like a like a. A Chaos Knight, so you would imagine that like a Chaos Knight with a Chain Talon is going to decimate, it's maybe not going to kill him in one round of combat, but it's going to put, leave him on like one or two wounds. It's going to be really nasty. So he's not unkillable, but he can bully MSU units, and that's where it gets interesting, right? A unit of knobs is like 105 points. If Mephiston's only 120 points, then you're saying that like he could actually bully a unit of knobs potentially by himself, and he's lone operative, so he can't be shot, and he's got a four up feel no pain, and he's preventing fallbacks. So there's a lot of things that he is doing that's actually pretty interesting based on how survivable he is. How reliable is his damage output is the other question though, right? So like all his damage output bar that plasma pistol is D3. So I don't, I of when I've played Mephisto in the past, I've always hated his D3 damage output. So I actually wanted to work out just like, how does D3 damage output actually work, right? Because like you roll a D6, one and two is 
33% chance to do 1 damage, 3 and 4 is 33% chance to do 2, and 5 or 6 is 33% to do 3. So if we fight into like a 3 wound model, this is, I actually worked this all out, so there's 33% chance to kill that 3 wound model in 1 hit, there's a 56% chance to kill it in 2 hits, and there's 11% chance that it would take all three hits. And it makes sense, right? 33 times 33 times 33, like you rolled crap, you rolled crap, you rolled crap. 11% uh, chance to hit, um, to kill it in three hits. So how does he do against two wound models? That was also a thing that I wanted to know. So it's a 60% six chance to kill it in one hit, right? Because like a three to six would kill it in one hit. And a 33% chance to kill it in two hits. So, like, I kind of wanted to just put that into practice a little bit. Like, what if we take him against orc knobs, like minimum size unit, and maybe some terminators, slightly harder minimum size unit. Actually, orc knobs are quite a strong unit in that they're toughest five, and they have that five up. I've, I've worked out with their five up in Vun. They don't always have that. Um, certain detachments have the five up in Vun, but regardless, that's what we're going to work this out as, right? And to do this, I had to do something a little bit different this week. Into, I had to work out failed saves, Right, because we need to know how many failed saves we've got. Because then it's not like it's not simple anymore. Like where we would just do two damage and kill him, kill an orc, kill an orc, kill an orc. No, we've got to deal with this silly numbers here, which is really hard to predict. So let's talk about that, right? So like we focus witch fire with our sustain three and D three into the orcs. Like I said, they've got this five up in Vun. We supercharge our plasma pistol because we want to use it to kill one orc. Cool. And then we use Vitarius on the charge, strength seven and. Uh, sorry, 7 attacks, of strength 11, AP 3 on the charge. And the numbers in green are when he is charged and he doesn't get his uh, Liberator Assault Group bonus, right? So if we take all those failed saves from earlier, and we work out the total number of failed saves against the D3 damage, which would be 4.5, uh, then 66% chance for the 1 hit, 33% chance for the 2 hits, uh, basically... This means four and a half or at 66, which gives us three, four and a half or at 33, which gives us one and a half. So the D3 damage potentially can kill four and a half. The, the one shot of the plasma pistol kills 0.4. So basically I'm saying like you could kill five orcs, right? Like statistically he has the damage to kill five orcs, but the kicker is, and I don't know how to do the maths on this. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me. If you roll the ones or twos at bad times, i.e., if your first wound roll is a 1, then whatever you roll on that second dice is irrelevant because it's doing 1 damage to, to this, you know, like you could roll a, a 6 and do 3, but that 1, that 3 needs to be assigned to an orc model that has 1 wound left. So if your second wound roll is then the third one, then basically what you've said is, statistically here where you're going to roll, like you are going to roll some 1s and 2s, when you roll those ones and twos, if you roll them at really bad times, potentially you just half his damage output. So he goes from killing five to killing only two and a half. So right, this is what makes Mephiston's damage mega difficult to predict. It's kind of why I wanted to make this video, but also makes it really difficult to know how best to use them on the battlefield. Because if you've got a character that does two damage, you can very quickly in your head go like, all right, he's got 10 attacks, he hits on twos, so that's eight hits, he wounds on twos, that's six wounds, the opponent saves on five, so he makes, you know, he makes two saves out of six, I will kill four orcs, right? And that's like a very simple thing to be able to do in your head, right? Um... Or I feel like it's reasonably simple to work out, you know, how many hits roughly I'm going to get, how many wounds, how many saves, right? Like, if you play 40k enough and you want to be competitive, I would guess that you actually need to start being able to do that in your head, right? You want to be able to go, like, um, dices, dice in this game are multiple, multiple, multiples of, like, 0 0.166, right? So, like, if you wound on twos, you basically have an 83% chance to wound. So you should be able to, in your head, go like 10 hits becomes, or in this case, 7 hits. 7 hits from Mephiston, how many wound, How many successful hits am I going to get when I wound on, when I hit on 2s? Right, you're going to be able to go like, it's going to be 5 or 6, right? You need to be able to do that in your head pretty quickly. And this makes Mephiston, for me, very difficult to play. Um, when charged, right, like if you were charged by that unit of Mega Knob, uh, not Mega Knobs, just Knobs, you only get the six attacks, you're only at strength nine, so you actually only end up with 2.2 successful, like, 2.2 failed saves from that orc player, which is kind of pretty low, 
considering 33% of the time you would only roll a one on that first dice and then you only kill a single knob, right? So like you get charged by a unit of knobs, he can kill one or two knobs. For like his massively exciting profile that he's supposed to have, only killing one or two knobs when he is charged with his fight first actually means his fight first is not as meaningful as maybe it was when he was leading a squad. So what if we took the same thing and did it against like a squad of Terminators, right? Uh, and if we take those failed saves and the numbers from earlier, and now we have to factor in the chance that like, you know, 33% of the time we're killing in one, 56% of the time we're killing two, 11% of the time we're killing in three. So like potentially he can kill 3.4 Terminators. So potentially you could kill three, right? But if you roll those ones and twos at bad times, i.e. wound roll one is a one and two, then wound roll two is a one and two, you actually only kill one. So like his damage variance is huge and it's super difficult to predict. So like you charge into a unit of Terminators, you are killing one to three Terminators. Now I think like if you compare that for the points you're going to pay for him to like um, the Captain with Finest Hour, with potentially Sustained Three, with potentially Dev Wounds, I feel like you'll be able to do those numbers in your head so much more quickly. Um, and also you'll be able to like, I feel like that Captain always probably kills more Terminators. And I, my, my opinion is I always seem to roll bad when, when it matters the most. So there's possibly just bad luck. Like I, I, I knew that he occasionally takes three hits to kill a three wound model. But when I've played, it felt like almost every time it was taking three hits to kill three wound models. I didn't realize the chance was as low as 11%. Uh, so it's actually not, you know, I guess if you look at it and add those two numbers together, it's 89% chance to kill a three wound model in two hits. It's not that bad, but it's difficult to predict. And I guess it all comes down to the order you roll the dice in and, and stuff like that. And one bad roll at one critical time, you know, and you can just basically lose a bunch of damage, right? So I also wanted to just take him into some of the nasty targets we play against. So nasty targets could be like a fitted bloat drone, could be angron, could be a knight castellan, right? Like what if he's just going to fire in to those big nasty targets? Because the d3 damage becomes kind of irrelevant at that point, right? Because we're just going to, for this for this slide, we're not looking at failed saves, we're just looking at raw damage output. So if he unloads with everything he has into a bloat drone, which has 11 wounds, he does like 7.5 to it. If he unloads everything he can into angron, he does like 4 wounds, and out of 16, and if he unloads everything he can into a Knight Castellan, he does like 3.7 out of 24. So, oh, I've written this down here below. Okay, yeah. So you can see, like, he's not ideal into any of these targets. Uh, even with his high strength 11, uh, even with his AP 3, his damage output is lacking, probably due to lack of attacks. You know, like, if you think about it, you're paying, like, 125 points here for seven attacks. If you did that on, like, we think Sangry Guard are overcosted at 150 points, well, they are getting 15 attacks and they are flat too. Um, and I think, so, so, I mean, like, in terms of, like, the point, you're paying a lot of points, I feel, for your feel no pain, for your denial of the fallback, and for your lone operative. So you have to be using them. Oh, and maybe even your fight first. You're maybe paying points for your fight first. So, like, how do you play Mephiston, then, to get the most value? Uh, to me, it feels like he's at a bit of a cross-purpose, right? Like, typically, lone operatives want to move around secondaries and do scoring. And if, um, when inevitably engaged, I guess, right, he's going to get engaged at some point, he's going to be a lot tougher than most of the currently available lone operatives, right? And maybe with a little luck, he can win a duel or two, or a combat or two, or he can kill something... But he's not a beat stick like he was years ago, uh, and his damage has crazy variants, absolutely crazy variants. Um, and, and I guess that's something that we're going to touch on here in a minute or more too. But like, if you were playing on a map like this where you are deployed in the bottom left in this blue deployment zone, uh, I think what you'd need to do on a map like this is you need to take units onto these side field um, objectives. One of the things you could do with Mephiston, I guess, is you could park an Impulsor behind this piece of terrain here. So in turn one, he could move out seven, or disembark three, then move out seven, then advance, and he'd be quite happy standing over here. I feel like they're not going to be able to draw a line of sight on him from there. 
So something's going to have to draw line of sight on him this way. That's never going to be 12 inches away. So there is places that he is going to be great. Like he's going to be able to move on to that objective turn one. He's going to be able to hold it. He's going to be able to be unshot against. And maybe if a unit comes out here to shoot him and charge him, maybe he survives the shooting. Maybe he fights first. Maybe he survives because he's so durable. So there is some play 100% for Mephiston. But I think like he is going to be a hard character to play because you're going to you're just not going to know how to optimally use him in combat. And I think Blood Angels, at least in my experience, having played Blood Angels a lot, I like to know what I'm doing in combat. Right? Like I like to be making calculated moves that will kill enemies. Like I don't like to leave enemies units half alive so they can fight back. Like I like to make charges that are predictable and well thought out. Um, and one of the things I was saying in one of the other videos that I did about like um, maps and placement and, and advanced tactics for Blood Angels, I talked about how like I went to GT recently where I don't think I failed a single charge, and it's because I always set myself up to have like low charges, like five inch charges, six inch charges. And Mephiston will actually be one of those characters who can get across the board very quickly and make the reliable charges having no reliable damage makes him super difficult to play. So I wanted to come to a bit of a conclusion based on like what I'm seeing from all these numbers. Um, and also I've read so many articles and I actually put a post out on Reddit. So huge thank you to everybody that, that replied to Reddit. Um, but yeah, so I read so many articles, people feel he's amazing. His survivability and potential utility are good. But he's so random, right? Like sometimes he kills some guys. Sometimes he locks an enemy in combat. Sometimes he fights first, which kills a few enemies and lets him survive. So this is where I went to Reddit and was like, I need even more information, right? So, and I mean, you, you can find this post on Reddit uh, if you want to. But this is different people saying that they have played him in Liberator Assault Group and what they felt about him, right? So, he worked pretty well for me. He saved all shots against and killed every character I sent him into. He mainly used him to counter when an MSU got charged. So this was actually kind of interesting that I hadn't considered. I was like, if you are going to play him and have him hang out next to one of your MSU units, so the enemy is going to use like one of their MSU units to charge one of your MSU units, then you're going to try and heroic intervene, because if you heroic intervene, you get the plus two strength bonus and you get the plus one attack, and then you can fight, and then you can potentially lock the enemy in combat and stuff like that. So... um Heroic intervention with him and smart placement of him to protect MSU units. I actually kind of like that. Uh, I use them in a casual game. I'm very black. They brought heroic intervention back to 1CP, causing interrupting someone's charge with Viston has had some very fun moments. The fight first and strength boost for Red Thirsty. As you, if you heroic intervene, you do get your fight first and you do get your strength boost. Um, I also got lucky with Fury of the Ancients and used it alongside his melee to wipe a 10-man squad of intercessors that had a lieutenant leading them. A 10-man squad. He does have sustained three on his shooting. So, I mean, I guess if you rolled like double six, suddenly you're getting nine attacks out of that smite. Which, which is insane. Yes. Okay, so... This is what's happening. In my last game, I charged him into a unit of Votan Terminators. He killed the character and he tied up the unit for a couple of turns, stopping units around him from falling back, keeping a squad of Blade Guard from being shot at. Votan Terminators are disgusting when they shoot you. So they're another great use of them. Um, next person says, so often he does nothing in melee. Obviously, Liberator Assault Group, if he's charged, he gets no bonuses. And then if you charge him, he'll go up to strength 11, which sounds fantastic. But yeah, so often he does nothing in melee. Mephiston forced the Dark Angels player to advance and charge a blob of Hellblasters. To get in range of the objective, he was solo camping. Like I said, probably pretty good in that map we looked at if he was solo camping. He lives through the shooting through his sheer insanity and his feel no pain. Then he charged in and killed off a few before dying. For the 100 odd points he cost, he's a monster. So... People definitely getting use out of him. Tone was saying, I had great success in my tournament yesterday. He was an absolute menace in my game against Black Templars. I staged him behind an L-shaped ruin in round one and moved my Death Company squad right in front of him when my opponent moved up his sword brethren led by the Emperor's Champion. They got overwatched by the Bow Predator, which reduced them. Then charged Mephistic Horror intervened and wiped the remaining two. So yeah, I mean, statistically, based on the numbers I said, you should force the enemy to make a couple of saves uh, with the remain. You know, when, when you do heroic intervention. So, 
After that, he overran the center objective and my opponent was unable to deal with that. Uh, Angel said his damage is swingy. He can wreck or he can pay playfully slap whatever he's hitting. He can, however, be an absolute tank on an objective. I really liked him, but I agree with the opinions you've put forth in your streams. He isn't a reliable offensive unit. At least not with my dice. Yeah, that's that's literally how I feel about him. So I'm glad someone else felt this way about him. And then in my <laughs> my next comment, I um we worked out statistically you should do four damage out of sixteen wounds against Angron. Oz Marshall said he survived 1v1 against Angron, then killed him. The dude's busted if the dice are cooking. So, I mean, here's the thing, right? I've played 40k at enough tournaments to uh, say that I like to use units that I can reliably... I, units that I can rely on, right? Like, I need to know what my units can do in the battlefield, and I do not like units that are going to have this mad swing... But the mad swing can work if the dice are cooking. My experience of that is at the top tables, at the end of the event, when you're desperate for those good dice, they don't come. And I like something more reliable. But you know what I did? Just for a bit of fun, I took all those Reddit posts. Discord posts, Reddit posts, and I put them all into chat GPT. You know on Amazon, when you search for something now, they have like the AI say like, People like this product uh, because of its reliability, etc. So I asked ChatGPT, I gave it like a wall of text. It actually blue screened my computer, or I wish I had taken a photo of it. But ChatGPT put it all together. I asked it for a conclusion. Mephiston has received mixed reviews from players using him in lag. I think it got confused a little bit. Uh, many find him surprisingly tanky due to his defensive abilities, with several players noting he can absorb significant damage and disrupt enemy strategies effectively. However, his offensive output is often described as swingy and unreliable, with his D3 damage making him hard to consistently skewer kills against tougher units. I mean, I think that's against all units. Um, while some players appreciate his utility as a countercharge unit or an objective holder, others feel that his points increase that if his points increase significantly, he become less viable in competitive play. He is at 125 right now at the time of fi filming this video. I know we're getting new points updates next week. Like I said, if he goes up 10, it's a big question mark. If he goes down 10, it's, it's up to you. Like, do you like Swing? If you like Swing, he's almost like the perfect character. Overall, he seems to be valued for a strategic impact rather than his sheer damage potential. I think ChatGPT did a really good job of trying to put together all those comments. I could have just spent another 20 minutes reading comments, um, but I felt like this summed it up pretty well, and it was kind of what I was thinking. It's kind of why I personally don't play him. But now you've got all the numbers. You know what he can do. He can... A lot of people... Like, I want to say that they're like... It was at least like 75% of people said he was a great addition to the army. He had been cooking for them. I think that if you play him enough times, you're going to have those amazing games with him. Um, but for every amazing game you're going to have, you're also going to have that game like I have, where the Terminators fail three saves and you kill a single enemy Terminator because you roll a one or a two in each of the first two rolls and then it doesn't matter if you roll a six on the third one all three of those damage rolls are going into one Terminator. So, that's what we've got. That is the breakdown on Mephiston. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. My name is John, and I am here every week to try and help you be a better Blood Angels player. I will be live tomorrow night painting some Assault Intercessors, most probably, and building some new Death Company with Eviscerators. So I'd love to see you come join the live stream. Uh, we're live every Saturday night at at 10 we're live every sunday for our army list show uh subscribe like share comment support me on patreon i do really really appreciate it. there's a bunch of support links in the video description if you want to do any of that stuff it means the world to me thank you so much everybody that um tunes in every week and watches the video the channel wouldn't be here without each and every one of you have a great weekend brothers uh let me know how you get on with mephiston i'll see you guys soon by the blood are we made strong. Peace. The 17th is when we're getting the new points update. Hopefully I'll be able to do a live stream as soon as the points update comes out. We'll talk about it. I'll see you guys then. Peace.